This is the exact moment a massive, brand new piece of infrastructure in China completely failed. It doesn't look real, it looks like CGI. But what you are seeing is a section of the Hongqi Bridge, a 662 meter long engineering marvel, simply ceasing to exist. One moment it's there, spanning a massive gorge in Sichuan province. The next, the mountainside itself seems to liquefy and a concrete pier standing 170 meters tall, that's taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza, is swept away like a twig in a gutter. The road deck tears apart, twists, and crashes into the valley below. Now, looking at this footage, your gut instinct says bad engineering. You think of cheap concrete, cut corners, or maybe a design flaw. And usually, you'd be right. But here is the twist. The bridge didn't fail because the steel was weak. It didn't fail because the concrete was poor. It failed because of what was lurking hundreds of feet under the ground. This is a story about a billion dollar mistake. It's a story about a forensic investigation into a crime scene where the culprit is the earth itself. And to understand how a modern megastructure can just disappear, we have to stop thinking like engineers and start thinking like geologists. We need to look at the invisible forces that can turn a solid mountain into a liquid killer. Let's rewind. The Hongqi Bridge wasn't just some back road overpass. It was a flagship project for the G3117 National Highway, designed to connect the beating heart of China to the remote, rugged Tibetan plateau. This is seismic country. This is earthquake territory. The engineers knew that. They designed this thing to withstand the kind of shaking that levels cities. Construction finished earlier this year. It was shiny. It was new. It was supposed to be invincible. And yet, on November 11th, 2022, there was no earthquake. The ground didn't shake. There was no explosion. The official report used one word, landslide. But that word is lazy. It hides the terrifying complexity of what actually happened. Because landslides don't just happen, they are engineered by nature, over thousands of years, waiting for a trigger. To see the trigger, we have to peel back the surface of the mountain. We need to understand three specific geological nightmares that were hiding in plain sight. The first is something called a paleo landslide. Imagine a mountainside that collapsed 10,000 years ago. Over centuries, trees grow back. Soil covers the scars. To the naked eye, and even to an untrained surveyor, it looks like a solid, healthy mountain. But it's a lie. Deep down, the rock is shattered. It's a jumbled mess of debris that is sitting there, essentially balancing on a banana peel. This is a dormant landslide body. It's a sleeping giant. It looks dead, but it's just waiting to be woken up. The second factor is the rock itself. Mountains in this part of Sichuan aren't solid blocks of granite. They are what geologists call heavily fractured. Think of a ceramic plate that you dropped on the floor, but didn't quite shatter apart. It holds its shape, but it is riddled with millions of microscopic hairline cracks. These cracks are highways for water. They allow moisture to penetrate deep into the core of the mountain, finding every weakness, every fault line, every ancient scar. And that brings us to the third concept, the most important concept in geology, the assassin. It's called poor water pressure. You need to visualize this. Imagine a glass jar filled with dry sand. You can pack that sand down tight. It feels hard. Friction is locking those grains together. But now, start slowly pouring water into the jar. The water fills the tiny gaps, the pores, between the grains of sand. As the water level rises, it starts to push outward against every single grain. It's hydraulic pressure. It literally pushes the grains apart, destroying the friction that held them together. Suddenly, that solid sand turns into a liquid slurry. It flows. This is exactly what happens inside a mountain. When groundwater rises, it pushes the rock apart from the inside out. The internal friction vanishes. The mountain loses its grip. So, we have a sleeping ancient landslide, we have fractured rock, and we have the physics of water pressure. But we need a trigger. A mountain doesn't just decide to fail on a Tuesday afternoon. Someone, or something, has to pull the trigger. Enter the Shuangjiangku Hydro Power Station. This wasn't just a bridge project. 
It was part of a massive hydrological re-engineering of the landscape. They were building one of the tallest dams in the world, over 300 meters high, just downstream. To make this dam work, they had to flood the valley. The Hongqi Bridge was built specifically to stay above this new rising waterline. On May 1st, 2005, the dam operators began impoundment. That's a fancy word for closing the gates and letting the water rise. And this is where the disaster scenario begins. As the reservoir filled, water didn't just sit in the valley. It began to permeate the valley walls. It forced its way into those millions of fractures in the rock. It soaked into the toe of that ancient sleeping landslide. Day by day, week by week, the water level climbed, and with every meter of water, the pore pressure inside the mountain spiked. The water was lubricating the slip surface, the boundary between the loose landslide debris and the solid bedrock beneath it. It was like greasing a ramp. The engineers had built a billion-dollar bridge on a slope that was being actively turned into mud. Now, you might ask, did they know? Building a bridge in a place like this requires an obsessive level of geological investigation. You have to drill deep cores. You have to map the ancient scar. If you find a paleo landslide, you have two choices. One, move the bridge. Anchor it to the core of the earth. You have to drill massive concrete piles through the loose debris, deep into the solid bedrock below. You have to build retaining walls. You have to install drainage systems to bleed off that dangerous water pressure. According to geologist Fan Xiao, who analyzed the failure, the surveys were likely inadequate. They missed the scale of the risk. The evidence suggests the bridge piers were founded on the unstable material, or just barely inside it, rather than anchored through it into the stable rock beneath. They built a skyscraper on top of a sand castle, and then they turned on the hose. The mountain tried to warn them. This is the part that gives me chills. Two days before the collapse, on November 9th, cracks started appearing on the slope. The ground was physically tearing itself apart, groaning under the strain. These cracks were the yield point, the moment the friction finally gave up against the gravity. To their absolute credit, the authorities didn't hesitate. They saw the cracks. They realized the danger. They closed the bridge to all traffic on November 10th. That decision saved dozens, maybe hundreds of lives. Then, on the afternoon of November 11th, physics took over. Deep inside the mountain, the sheer plain failed. Millions of tons of rock and soil, saturated with water, detached from the bedrock. The ancient landslide woke up. It surged forward, taking the bridge pier with it. The pier didn't snap. It was carried away intact, like a surfer on a wave of earth. Without support, the deck above simply surrendered to gravity. This wasn't a bridge failure. The structural steel didn't let us down. This was a ground failure. The lesson here is brutal. We are building faster, higher, and in more dangerous places than ever before. But geology does not care about our timelines. It does not care about our budgets. The Hongqi Bridge is a monument to what happens when we underestimate the Earth. It proves that you can have the best concrete and the strongest steel in the world. But if you don't respect the dirt it stands on, gravity will always win. The silver lining is that the road was empty, but next time, we might not be so lucky.